everybody, Chris Gilliland here with Screw Conveyor Parts. Thank you again for joining us today. Today we're going to cover one of our technical topics. We're going to talk about screw conveyor shaft seals and more particularly the SCP master seal versus a standard screw conveyor waste pack seal. We're going to talk about some of the features and benefits and design of both of these seals. We're going to take both of them apart, look at the internals and how they work. We're also going to show how we mount one of our SCP master seals onto the end of a screw conveyor trough end. So stay tuned today. I think you're going to really enjoy everything we're covering. First of all, when we look at the waste pack seal, so this is a really common screw conveyor seal here. And the way it mounts is you're going to mount this against the trough end. You're going to have on the other side a flange bearing, which I have right here. So the flange bearing is going to mount here trough end on this side, and then obviously your shaft will come through here. And so when we take a closer look, a lot of people say, why is it called a waste pack seal? So essentially you have your main lip seal here, and I'll show this a little closer in a second, but we also have this cavity here. And what that allows us to do is take our waste pack, which is kind of a yarn material, and when the shaft goes through here, we'll pack this packing around the shaft. And the point of that is when the lip seal eventually fails then as if the material falls in here it'll be caught by this and not land on your floor so this is a really basic seal and again on the back side you can see this is a basic lip seal spring uh, elastomer lip seal just like you'd see it's essentially an oil seal like you'd see on a rotating shaft on an axle on a car and this type of seal is very common it's very cost effective it's only a few hundred dollars for one of these um, and it'll give you good life, especially in granular materials. It works really well with whole grain, uh, various grain materials. Also works really well with plastics. Um, anything that even after you get some wear on this seal, the material is granular enough that it won't go through there. And these seals work, we use them quite a bit. They work well in horizontal applications uh, also. And they do, as we start to put them on a bit of an incline, now we have material kind of setting on here on the trough end on the inside of the screw. So then we start to maybe look at some alternative seals. So that's the basics of the waste pack seal. Like I said, a really good cost effective. It's been used for, for a long time uh, with screw conveyors. So the second seal I'm going to talk about, and, and really the, the one that we like to use the most here at Screw Conveyor Parks, is our SCP Master Seal. and. Uh, the reason we call it a master seal is because it's the master of all seals. It works much more effective than our common waste pack seal. Um, as you can see here, just looking at them, our waste pack seal's got a carbon steel body with a zinc coating on the outside for corrosion resistance. Our SCP master seal comes with stainless steel. They're actually 316 stainless steel cover plates, a UHMW body. They come with a silicone, boot and they use Teflon rotor cups which are these here. Um, essentially it mounts in the same way as a waste pack seal so you mount it up against your trough in uh, like this. Doesn't really matter which side. You do have bolts here to allow you to take that face plate off for service uh, but you have them on both sides. So you're going to mount this against your trough in. Same thing here. Your, your flange bearing will mount against it and then your bolts go through here and your shaft. So we're going to take this seal apart in a little while, but I will talk about some of its features. First of all, anytime customer needs a stainless steel seal, we're automatically going to default to this um, instead of any other seal. It is the cheapest stainless steel seal that we can provide. So if we've got a corrosion environment, um, maybe we've got a wet environment or some type of chemical, uh, this seal and the internals are going to hold up much better than our normal carbon steel. So the way it effectively works, <clears throat> and we'll go over here and show it a little bit, but you have this internal rotor cup, or this internal rotor. It moves with the shaft and turns these face plates, which I think more effectively they're called rotor cups. So as that turns, it effectively moves your shaft seal from the shaft, where here you have the shaft right up against this lip seal. It moves it into where your effective seal for your conveyor is going to be these rotor cups up against this faceplate. 
And so this also has the ability to be air purged. We can run an air purge to this. They even have more positive pressure to help protect the seal a little bit more. So I've gone ahead and used my uh, 532nd hex uh, Allen wrench to go ahead and take apart this seal. So faceplate comes off with uh, these four bolts here. Once that's off, you have access to the internal uh, rotor and the stator cups. So, um, or should I say rotor cups and internal boot. Um, so once you pull these out, so these are the, when I talked about earlier, I talked about these rotor cups that forms a seal. And so you can see kind of in this where it, it forms a seal right there. And that's really your effective shaft seal for your conveyor is going to be between this rotor cup and that front face. And then so the only other place material could possibly move would be in through the shaft in this boot. But that's not really possible uh, because of the width of it. So one thing we have here, this is an adjustment band clamp. And the point of this band clamp is to put put compression onto the shaft. So that basically grips the shaft. So as it turns, it turns the shaft. And as you squeeze this down, it also pushes it out, which also helps to put more pressure on your rotor cups. And so as you do that, this whole assembly moves as one assembly inside of the housing, creating your seal. And again, if you add air purge to it, then you're going to get even more. So you can kind of see the internals of the UHMW body here. So we're going to go ahead and install the SCP Master Seal. And the common tools you're going to need is a 1516 socket, uh, also either a 1516 wrench or just what I had around was a big crescent wrench. So again, we have our seal, we have our bearing, we have an end shaft. Well, we do have our hardware kit. So the hardware kit's going to come with four four bolts we need, um, washers, lock washers. It may come with an extra few washers. We do include flat washers for both sides. And that's because a lot of times these holes are, since they're burned on a burn table, are a little oblong. So we provide washers. So if you want to, if you need to use them on both sides, you can. Um, typically, obviously when you s install this, your shaft's going to already probably be sticking out. Um, may or may not, depending on how you did it, if you went ahead and installed it in the screw and then now you're putting this together, um, you also could just not do that. And the first thing you can do is go ahead, let's get our seal mounted. And I like to have the adjustment port where you can get to it. So our flange on our top of our conveyor a lot of times is gonna interfere. So I like to make sure we have our adjustment port and our purge port facing out left to right. Um, so probably not gonna be pretty putting this together. It's hard to hold all these components, but I'll go ahead and give it a shot here. Um, as far as which ways to install your hardware, I aesthetically just prefer the hardware to come from the out, outside the in. But the problem with screw conveyors, you have a screw there. So a lot of times it's hardware sticking out on the inside. And if it sticks out too far, you could you potentially could have an interference there. So typically we install them from the out, the inside out. And that way we're not protruding into the screw conveyor too much. Um, a lot of people ask why these are slotted. It's just slotted to give you some adjustability on putting the hardware in so you can move it around. Um, one thing I really haven't mentioned too much is these do allow for a lot of shaft. Um, not only a little bit of misalignment, we say we want it within a 16th parallel, but they also allow for run out in your shaft and that's really common in tail shafts. So really worth pointing out that you don't get any run out capability in your waste pack seal. Once you start moving that lip seal up and down, it's, it's done, it, it's no good for you anymore. And it's probably a good idea. It, you do have quite a bit of runout capability on these, so when you're aligning these, it's not super, super critical. But I would definitely make sure you've got, you don't have any interference from the stainless steel housing. Um, another thing you want to do is so typically as you loose as you tighten these, um, I find it's best to have the shaft in there. 
So have your screw already in. And before we do any final tightening, so we have some adjustability, um, I like to, again, make sure the shaft's in there before I finally tighten this thing. So we've got it kind of in there and kind of, I don't think we have any interferences. That's probably good enough. So one of the things it does say to do is to loosen the adjustment port. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just take the little cap off, little red cap. There's one over there, but take the little red cap off. And when we do that, you'll see inside there's a, a little band clamp and you can get to that with a flathead screwdriver. So you're just gonna loosen that up and that's gonna allow you, it's gonna take some of the tension off of the, uh, the, the silicone elastor uh, rotor that's in here. So that should allow us now to get this in. So you can see we've got our shaft in there uh, now. Took a little persuasion, but I did get it in there. And then now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up. Go ahead and rotate the shaft so we can see our band clamp adjustment. Go ahead and tighten that up. That way it puts pressure on the shaft. Ensures that our rotor is turning with the shaft and we're not getting any slippage. And then when that's tight, um, presumably this would be in your screw conveyor and you would have it all bolted down. Then you would go ahead and tighten all your hardware. Um, also be a good time if you're putting on your purge kit to go ahead and do that. So that's essentially the seal setup. So if you ever need to do maintenance on it, you just simply remove the flange bearing. And once you do that, you have access to the four screws on the face plate. You pull that off, you can take the rotor out and you can take the Teflon boots out as well. And so, um, so that allows you some maintainability versus this waste pack seal, which has that little lip seal. And once that goes, it's gone. There's no replacing that unless you, I guess, wanted to pull this out and press in a new one. Hey, I want to thank you again for joining us today to talk about our screw conveyor shaft seals, our SCP master seal versus our traditional waste pack seal. Like I said, both are really good seals. Both have great um, applications. We use probably just as much of each of those. Price-wise, a waste pack seal is gonna be a few hundred bucks and the master seal will be about twice that. So, you know, a few hundred more. Uh, overall, really in the cost of your, your screw conveyor project, it's, it's really not uh, much cost at all uh, when you compare to the performance gain that you get. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call or send us an email www.screwconveyorparts.com is the website. You can email us at gethelp at screwconveyorparts.com. And of course, give us a call, 682-231-1228. Thanks again, I hope you have a great day and look forward to talking to you soon.